Okay, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us, everybody. I am Shay Masterson with the with the Office of National Scholarship Advisement, or ONSA as we call it. Today is our Udall and Doris Duke information session. Um, I appreciate you all joining us. Please ask questions as you have them by typing into the chat or unmuting yourself and asking those questions. To go ahead and just share our overall agenda for today. First, I'm going to briefly talk about what ONSA or the Office of National Scholarship Advisement is here in case you are not familiar yet. Then I'll be going over the details of the Udall Undergraduate Scholarship um, benefits of it, eligibility, the application process. I'll share a couple other Udall programs. Um, briefly. Then I'll move into the Doris Duke program, kind of share the same kind of details with that program. I also have a couple other somewhat related programs I'll share about just um, in case you're interested in something else. Then I'll go over some general tips for applying to national scholarship and fellowship programs like these two. Um, and then we'll wrap up with a Q&A. Again, ask your questions as you have them, though, as well, if you'd prefer. So first and foremost, the Office of National Scholarship Advisement, or ONSA, here at ASU. Um, our office is focused on letting ASU students and graduates know about national internships, uh, study abroad opportunities, research opportunities, some kind of um, extra opportunities that enhance your time here as a student or graduate um, and prepare you and project you into the future that you're looking for. The reason why it's called National Scholarship Advisement is because all of the programs we advise on are national and sometimes international in their focus, both in the opportunity that they provide, but also the applicant pool. So with that means that these opportunities are, are highly prestigious and competitive. Um, the Udall and Doris Duke programs that we're going to talk about today have about a 10% um, award rate for you know how many apply to how many receive it some programs we advise on are slightly more than that some are slightly less even down to you know just one percent so highly um, competitive and prestigious but that's what ONS is here for so we let students know about these wonderful opportunities but then also help you prepare for them so figuring out which programs are best for you then what is the application process? So that includes individualized feedback on your application, especially the written portions of the application, because that is often the um, most challenging part of the application process. Many programs also include an interview. Um, in today's case, Udall does not include an interview as part of their application process, but Doris Duke does. So for programs where you're selected as a finalist and there will be an interview, we also provide help, guidance, and preparation for that. So that, in a nutshell, is what ONSA is, what we're here for, how we support the ASU population. Um, and please keep in mind that we are here to support students after they have graduated as well. So if there's ever programs that you're looking to apply for once you've already graduated from ASU, we're still here for that as well. Um, so getting us started today, the first program we'll talk about is the Udall Undergraduate Scholarship. So the Udall Foundation, um, with their, their motto, Civility, Integrity, and Consensus, they uh, were founded in honor of Stuart and Morris Udall, two brothers that were um, from Arizona, and they both had a uh, different but similar paths with a focus on public service, leadership, um, the environment and conservation. They both did a lot of work in that realm and oftentimes um, in issues related to and um, in support of Native American nations here in the US. So that is what the Udall Foundation is in honor of. And they have a few different things that they do through the foundation. One of them is the undergraduate scholarship, which we'll talk about today. 
So if you become a UDAL scholar through the undergraduate scholarship, you would receive up to $7,000 towards your academic expenses as an undergraduate student. So that's tuition, books, supplies, living expenses, those kind of eligible academic expenses as an undergraduate student. In some cases, they also may be applicable to if you're doing some kind of additional program during your undergraduate experience um, that is at another institution and you need to fund that. It could potentially help with those costs as well, but you do have to get special approval from UDAL for that. Um, but with all national scholarships and fellowship programs, oftentimes the bigger benefit is is what you get in addition to the funding. And that's no different with UDAL. So every year, UDAL has their scholar orientation, um, usually the first week of August in Tucson. While for you all being ASU students, that might not be very far, but this is a national program. So there will be um, scholars from all over the country coming to Tucson for that orientation. And it's a week long professional development and networking opportunity where UDAW scholars, alumni and professionals come together, all with a similar interest um, and mission as it relates to either issues that are relevant to Native American populations and or the environment and conservation. Um, and then you also become part of the uh, far-reaching and illustrious UDAL alumni network and the work that they're doing. So that's a big benefit of becoming a UDAL scholar is that is that forward thinking um, network that you'll be a part of for the, for the rest of your life as a professional in one of these fields. I'll also take a moment to note um, all of the pictures that we use in our presentations are of real live ASU students and alumni who have been selected for the various programs we advise on. So um, in the very beginning of the presentation, before we kind of got started, we had Nakia Draper. Here's um, Grant L. Realbird. They were both UDAL uh, scholars. So keep that in mind as we go through the presentation. So some, some by the number stuff when it comes to the UDAL undergraduate scholarship. So every year they award 55 scholars um, who receive the full benefit and, and recognition of the program. Um, they also do some honorable mentions, which says, you know, these people are also doing great things and will all continue to do great things. They just didn't quite make the cut, but we wanted to provide that honorable mention. You're not really necessarily getting all of the added benefit of being a scholar, but they've come to recognize that there's so many great applicants to the program each year. That's kind of an added thing that they've done. Um, and in a minute, we're going to talk about eligibility. And if you apply in the earlier eligibility of this, you could also be an honorable mention your first year, then apply again the next year and end up being a scholar um, if you're in that time frame. The UDAL program is a little unique in that there are kind of two separate categories of um, nominees and scholars that they award each year. There's the environmental category, so that's for those focused on environmental issues. And then, then there's the category of Native American tribal policy or Native health care. Um, so they're looking for individuals that are focused in those kind of two or somewhat three categories of, of scholars. ASU is able to nominate up to eight individuals each year, four in each category, um, Native American issues and, and environmental issues um, being those two categories. While only 55 a year are awarded and ASU can only nominate up to eight a year, um, ASU has been a top performing UDAL institution since its inception. We've had 31 scholars since 1997. Um, and two, two years ago, we had multiple, we had three scholars. So that was a top performing year for us just in one year out of all of the country, we had three coming from ASU specifically. Um, Megan Tom was a few years ago as a tribal public policy recipient, who you see on the screen right now. Um, any questions right now? 
Again, you can ask them at any time or hold them till the end, it's up to you. Okay, so eligibility for the UDAL scholarship. Regardless of which category you're applying in, you do have to be a second or third year undergraduate, meaning you have a full year or two years remaining in your undergraduate studies at the time that you apply. So um, if you, and that's why I said before, you know, if you, if you're a second year student and you apply and receive an honorable mention, you could potentially still apply the following year and then be a scholar in that year. And that has happened before. Um, if you're already in your third year, obviously you're not gonna get that chance because you're, you're running out of eligibility time, um, but that is something that happens. So don't be disheartened. And even if you don't get selected as an honorable mention or as a scholar and you're a second year student, you still can apply again the next year. If you've already received it, you won't apply again, but you could apply again if you don't receive it. Um, in the tribal public policy or native health care category, you also have to be a Native American or Alaska Native to fulfill the eligibility for that. So you have to be wanting to um, go into the field of tribal public policy or Native health care, but you also have to be a Native American or Alaska Native. And that can be um, fulfilled by either you yourself being a registered member of a recognized um, uh, tribe or nation, or if one or more of your parents or grandparents were registered members. So even if you yourself are not, if your parents or grandparents were or are, then you can also still be eligible, um, fulfill that eligibility requirement. Uh, for that category, you have to have a demonstrated commitment. So you have to have already been doing some things and shown that commitment through your coursework, extracurricular activities, um, leadership experience, internship experience, even job experience in some cases. But you have to have shown that commitment in some shape or form to issues relevant to Indian country and that you are planning to pursue a career where you want to have an impact and make a difference as it relates to Native American or Alaska Natives in general or your tribe specifically when it comes to public policy and Native health care. For the public policy um, category, that is pretty pretty broad and far reaching. So if you're not sure whether, you know, what you're thinking about doing, what you're interested in doing falls within that category, um, reach out to me directly, email me, um, schedule an appointment with me. We can talk it through more in depth if you're not sure, but chances are if you're wanting to do something as it relates to um, Native American and Alaska Natives policy that relates to them in kind of any way, shape or form, chances are you're gonna be able to fulfill that requirement. Then the other category, um, you do not have to be Native American or Alaska Native, um, but you do have to have a commitment to and an interest in pursuing career that relates to environmental issues. So conservation, sustainability, um, anything in that realm then you would fall under that category. Um, and if you're like, well, I'm a Native American or Alaska Native, but I want to pursue things as it relates to the environment, um, chances are you'll apply under that category. But again, reach out to me, schedule an appointment with me, and we can talk that through in more depth. So that's, that's in a nutshell what you have to do to be eligible for the UDAL undergraduate scholarship. Now, in order to apply for this program, you're going to want to go to the UDAL website um, and go through kind of their who should apply to this program to confirm, you know, that you are in line with um, their their eligibility and interests. Uh, they have an option to download a sample application. You will want to do that because you're not going to have access to the full application portal until you've already met with me um, and you have to get access to their application portal through ONSA. So because you have to be nominated by ASU and because we have limited um, spots for nominations each year, you can't just go into their system and start an application on your own. You have to go through us for that. Um, 
as part of the application, you will have to, you know, include some basic information about yourself. Um, you'll have to include your unofficial transcripts. Um, there are three recommendations required for the UDAL program specifically. Um, so you'll have to think about who would serve as a good strong recommendation for you in terms of your academic performance, in terms of your commitment and interest in the respective area that you're applying under. Um, and you'll have to work on some short answers and uh, and write an essay. So all of that can be kind of seen if you download that sample application, if you're gonna to work towards that and kind of get a sense of things, as well as work on your draft of your application before you actually are ready to get access to the portal and submit your application. Um, part of this application, that essay, is a, a somewhat unique um, thing to UDAL, uh, pretty much all programs are going to require some form of essay or essays. But in the UDAL sense, you have to write, it's not necessarily a personal statement or a policy statement or a research proposal like some other programs require. Um, they actually want you to write about a piece of work, uh, whether that be a speech, a written work, a piece of legislation that one of the Udall brothers um, was behind during their career. So you're gonna use that piece of writing, speech, legislation as the lens to write your personal statement. So part of the process of applying is also doing some research and looking into Udall speeches, pieces of writing and legislation, which on their website, they have a link to. Um, it's housed in the University of Arizona um, system, but they have kind of a portal that has previous works uh, of the Udall brothers. So you're gonna to need to go through that, um, kind of get a sense of, of where they stood on different issues. You don't wanna just read one thing and then decide that's what you're gonna write about. You wanna go through at least a few to get an overall sense of things. Um, but that's part of the application process is to do that research and make your selection. And then you're gonna apply through the campus deadline, which is February 8th for this year. So again, because you have to receive university nomination and apply through ONSA, you have to apply before the national deadline in March, which we'll go over next. Um, so that deadline to have everything completed, including your recommendations and submitted to ONSA is February 8th for this year. Um, once you, everybody has submitted by that deadline, then there will be campus committee that will meet, go over all of the applications, discuss them, and select the ASU nominations for the year, as well as provide feedback to those who have applied. Those who receive a nomination, then will have, they'll receive that feedback from ONSA, and then they'll have a few weeks to make any adjustments to their application materials, um, taking in that feedback from the committee before ASU submits your final application by the national deadline in March. Okay, so that's kind of overall how the application process goes and the things that you wanna keep in mind as you move through it. Remember at the end, after I go through all the programs, I'm gonna go through some general tips as well. Any questions so far? Okay, so um, just briefly, some other UDAL programs to consider, which I mentioned I would, I would discuss briefly. They do also have their Native American Congressional Internship, which I know we have at least one person on here interested in. This is an opportunity to spend a summer interning in Washington, DC with a congressional office. It is open to undergraduate, graduate, um, and law students. So all of the above can apply for the Native American Congressional Internship. Um, you do have to be Native American or Alaska Native to be eligible to apply for that program and interested in pursuing um, career as it relates to uh, Native American policy issues um, and whatnot. So kind of similar to that first category for that undergraduate scholarship. And the applications generally for that are due January 31st. You do not have to go through the university um, nomination 
process for that program. But if you want help and guidance on your application, um, please come to us. I can, I can give you feedback for that as well. Um, if you are planning to pursue a career in the area of Native American health care specifically, and you know you are going to go to graduate school um, as part of your process, something to keep in mind for the future. They also have the Native American Graduate Fellowship in Tribal Policy. For this, you would receive $25,000 as a graduate student um, for the academic year for your costs uh, for attending graduate school, um, but you already have to be a graduate student for at least one semester semester when you apply for this program um, and you have to be planned to enrolled for at least the upcoming year half time part time um, and those applications are generally due in May again I just wanted to plug this in case that's something that you may be thinking about in the future. So those are their other programs under the umbrella of the Udall Foundation that are offered to uh, college students. So next I'm gonna transition and talk uh, for a little bit about the Doris Duke uh, Conservation Scholars Program. So again, there is a foundation that this program is um, operated under. Doris Duke was an individual who, um, she wasn't a political uh, individual like the Udall brothers, but she did do a lot of work in the realm of conservation um, and, and the arts and a few other categories that she focused on um, and donated uh, most of her money um, to the foundation. And one of the things that the foundation has come to do is the Conservation Scholars Program. So this is specifically an opportunity for undergraduate students um, from underrepresented groups who want to pursue careers in conservation, sustainability, the environment in general. So I'll talk, I'm not going to talk about the foundation in general, just focus on their um, conservation scholars program for a little bit here. So who should apply or who's eligible to apply? This is first and second year students. So you can apply, I know we have, I think one freshman on here. So this is actually a program that you can apply for as soon as now. Um, and similar to Udall, uh, since there's two years of eligibility for students, if you apply in your first year and don't get it, you can still apply in your second year. And I just attended an information session they had this week, and there was an alumni in the program who said she did just that. She applied in her first year, wasn't, wasn't selected, then applied again the next year and was. So there's still a chance, um, even if you don't receive it in your first year. Um, but these are for those who are planning to pursue careers in, in conservation, sustainability, environmental issues, um, either in the public or, or private sector, it doesn't, it doesn't specify, um, but they do have a particular interest in those who are not typically represented in the field of conservation, um, but that is, um, that, that can mean a lot of different things. So you don't have to be majoring in conservation and sustainability or anything like that. You just have to have an interest in pursuing a career in that. Um, so they take majors from all different fields for Doris Duke. If you're selected as a Doris Duke uh, scholar, then you will receive participation in a two year program that spans over two summers with an academic year in between. So it's fully funded um, to participate in either the UC Santa Cruz or the University of Washington Doris Duke program. So you, you, you participate in one or the other, not both of them. Um, and over the first summer, you participate in field research with 19 other scholars participating. So a total of 20 people participate in each program. Then over over the course of the academic year, you'll receive mentorship, professional development, and guidance um, towards leading into the second year where you will complete an internship in the field of conservation and sustainability. The research summer happens um, either in California or in the Pacific Northwest in, in the Washington area, um, going to different areas within those states to see different environments, um, do different research opportunities as a group. 
Um, the second summer is where you do a specific field placement internship. So that won't necessarily be with all of the scholars in one place. Those are those can happen in a variety of locations um, across the country, potentially um, with smaller groups who are participating in the program. Um, so participation is fully funded. They pay for your travel to and from these locations, um, for your room and board during participation, um, and you receive a stipend uh, while you're participating, usually around $4,000 for your participation each summer. Questions? Okay. So um, one important note for this is while both of these programs fall under the Dora Stoop Conservation Scholars Program, they actually each have their own separate applications. You can apply for both programs, but it is two separate applications that you have to submit if you want to do that, or you can choose either or to apply for. They each have their own system. Um, each of them, the, both applications are almost the same, not completely though. They will require you to include basic information about, you know, your name, your location, your um, academic information, transcripts. Um, both of them do require recommendation, essay, and resume, but it's a little bit different depending on the program that you're applying for. Um, the essays are going to be about 500 word words each. University of Washington requires three. Uh, University of California Santa Cruz has the an optional fourth essay that in general they're talking about your um, interests and background as it pertains to conservation efforts. Then the resume for University of Washington, you will upload a document that is your resume. And for UC Santa Cruz, you will input information about your experience, um, both work experience, research experience, volunteer experience, all of that into the form itself. Um, for both of them, you do have to have one recommendation from a faculty member or supervisor who can speak to your, your interest in conservation, your um, ability to be successful in this kind of program. Um, UC Santa Cruz also allows you to do an optional second recommendation as well. So for this, similarly to UDA, I would recommend you go to their website and download the application template. This is where you can kind of work on the draft of your complete application before you're ready to submit it into their form. Um, you can start the application at any time and save it and come back to it. Um, with this one, you're not going to upload your essays. You're, there's actually a, a text box that you'll put them into. So it's really ideal if you work on that, if not the application template in a separate Word document as you get it ready to submit. So even if you're not going to do the application template, you should still kind of work on all of your information in a separate Word document before you're ready to input it into the actual application form and submit it. Um, you should be requesting your recommendations, thinking about who, who those individuals will be, get ready to make the ask, start working on your resume and your essays, um, and be ready to submit your application by February 1st is the deadline for both of these programs. Um, for one of them, you have to have your, your recommendations um, your recommendations must be submitted at the same time that your application is submitted. So you have to prepare those recommenders for that. Um, for one of them, you, it's actually like a two day lag. So after you submit the application, your recommenders have two days after to get those submitted. The application template is on their specific websites. So after today, I will send everybody who participated or those who registered and weren't able to participate, um, I will send them, in addition to the recording of this session, I will send the specific links for each program so you can access those. But each one of those websites have their templates. Great question. 
Um, so important note, this one, you do not have to apply through ONSA. You do not have to be nominated by ASU. You do all of the application and submission on your own completely. So a little different than you'd all um, still have to do your complete application, but you, we will not submit it. You will submit it. Um, if this program is of interest to you, some others that you might want to consider, there is the Yale Conservation Scholars Early Leadership Initiative Program. This is out of Yale University, um, and it's actually uh, just starting, but it's operated and at least somewhat modeled off of the Doris Duke program. Um, so Yale had what was a Doris Duke location for one year. Um, so now the person who was running that program is running a, a separate program. So it's, it's very similar um, with a similar focus, similar opportunity, but it's gonna be um, in the Northeast of the United States um, over two summers with conservation efforts. They have their own application process um, as well. But that's kind of a similar opportunity that you could apply for as well in addition to these other ones. Um, then there's the Public Policy and International Affairs Junior Summer Institute. This one does not have a focus on conservation. It does not have a focus on tribal policy or native healthcare policy. It is more general. If you have an interest in pursuing a career in either public policy or international affairs, so if you're interested in going into um, Native American po tribal policy, or you're interested in going into an environmental policy as it pertains to public policy, this may be a program of interest for you. It is for juniors or, or students in their third year. It is a summer graduate level preparation program for those that are interested in not only a career in public policy or international affairs, but also specifically going to a grad program um, before continuing on into their career. Um, this is a summer program that takes place uh, at six different institutions institutions across the country. Um, for this one, you do one application, and then you specify which, which, which specific location you want to participate in. Um, if you're interested in pursuing that, uh, and it prepares you for graduate school, you also get um, some scholarship funds for graduate school if you go through the program depending on where you go and what you do it can vary what kind of scholarship funds you go get for this program um, if you are already a junior uh, i'm sorry it's too late their application deadline already passed it's at the beginning of november um, but if you're a freshman or a sophomore it's something to think for forward to in future years Um, so some general application advice that really applies to pretty much any national scholarship or fellowship application, but also specifically with these in mind. Um, you always want to think about how you can really show through your application materials that your leadership experience and potential, um, any service that you have had in terms of the community at large, your academic community, whether it's in or out of school, um, and specifically with these programs and most others, you want to very clearly show the reader of the application your commitment to whatever the focus of that program is. So in this case, it's going to be your commitment to conservation, sustainability, the environment, or your commitment to issues relating to Indian country, Native American tribal policy, healthcare policy. So you really wanna be able to, through, through any and all parts of your application, really show them that this is the background that you have and your commitment to these things going forward. Um, as you go into getting ready to apply for these types of programs, think about tangible times and experiences that you have really figured out and led 
solutions to problems. So most of these programs are looking for those who have a have a focus and a concentration on on solving the problems of a community or of the country or of society, you know, so problem solving focus there. So think about things that you've done in the classroom, in extracurricular activities, in jobs or internships that you've held where you've really um, kind of led that, that, that change, that fix, that solution. And you wanna be able to clearly explain through your application materials, what career path you're wanting to pursue. So again, in the categories we've talked about today, like what, what career does that look like for you? And kind of how does this program, how does this scholarship fit into that pathway? So um, don't worry. This is the, the quote here is from a, a previous Udall scholar specifically, um, but it's, you know, you don't want to worry about being the perfect applicant, about fitting any kind of mold. You really want to think more deeply about what makes you so interested, so passionate, so committed to the things that you're focused on as it pertains to this program. Um, don't worry about fitting their mold, worry about the program aligning with who you are and what's important to you and what you want to do, and then think about what is it that you have done and why is it that this is so important to you. And then the rest of the, the application is going to come together if you think about it in that way. I do, I do want to point out really quick. Um, the, the individual on the screen right now, Tahiri Langren, he was actually a recipient of both of these programs. So that is also common. Doris Duke is a great um, stepping stone, for lack of a better word, into receiving a UDAL. And because you can apply for Doris Duke as a first or second year student, and you can apply for UDAL as a second or third year student, it definitely makes sense that you could do both of them depending on where you're at in terms of your education. If you're already a junior and you're focused on conservation, obviously you've kind of missed the boat on Doris Duke, so you would go straight for UDAL, um, but there is definitely potential to do Doris Duke and then UDAL if your focus is conservation and sustainability. Um, and this is just one example of an individual who's done that. And oftentimes, Udall scholars and Doris Duke scholars go on to apply for and receive other national scholarships and fellowships. So it's, it's not just one and done, there's also potential for the future. So when it comes to writing essays for any of these programs, um, generally speaking, start early, um, start as soon as possible. Uh, it may seem like, oh, I have, it's only November and I have all the way until February to get uh, working on these. But if you approach it with that mindset, then it's gonna come time and the application's gonna be due in like a week and you're just gonna be getting started. So start sooner rather than later. Plan on going through several iterations of your essays. Um, for programs like this, you will go through at least, at least three drafts of your essay components, okay? Um, so plan on going through many revisions, um, and ANSA is here to help you through that process. In these programs specifically, I am here to help you through this process. So send your drafts to me early and often so that I can provide feedback to you and you can get um, not just your own thoughts on what, what works and what doesn't, but you can actually get feedback from me to move forward and make your essays um, more cohesive, more um, pack more of a punch as time goes on. You don't need to worry about your first draft being um, perfect. 
right? Many times students will go through many drafts before they send us their first draft. No, I want you to send me your real first draft. I don't care if there's typos. I don't care if there, if it doesn't meet the specific word or page or character count that the essay application is asking for. Send it to me and I'll help you get it there. All right. Um, I don't want you to submit it with errors and, and not meeting the specifications that the application is asking for, but you can send me your drafts before that point, and you should. Um, do not miss out on the opportunity for feedback. So it's what we're here for. We're here to support you through the process. We want to do this. Um, you never have to apologize for sending me multiple drafts. It's what I want you to do. It's literally what I'm paid to do. So email them to me um, throughout the process. Start soon, start early, revise often, send to me in between. If you are wanting feedback from me, generally speaking, I say to allow me two business days to get you thoughtful feedback on your draft. Um, and depending on where you are at in the process will determine what kind of feedback I'm providing. In the beginning stages, it's usually more um, big picture content, like this, this makes sense. Um, as we narrow down the focus, then it'll become more specific about, you know, like, oh, this sentence doesn't fit, or you have a spelling error here, or that kind of thing. I won't focus on that right from the beginning, but we will get there. In terms of your recommendations, I generally say plan to ask your recommenders at least four weeks in advance of the deadline. So you want to give them time to be able to make sure your recommendation is thoughtful and strong. Um, and so if you give them, you know, only a week, they don't necessarily have time. They have lives, they're busy. This isn't the only thing that they have to do is write you a recommendation for X program. So give them time to be able to do that, but also give your time, yourself time in case they say no or they don't get it done. Sometimes. Um, recommenders with the best of intention will say, absolutely, I'm happy to do this. And then as the deadline approaches, um, they get busy, they run out of time. So you want to give yourself some leeway time as well if they get back to you and say, I'm so sorry, I'm not able to do this. So ask in advance to give both you and you them time um, and ask in a way that's going to give them the opportunity to say no. Uh, recommenders often say no for any number of reasons. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're not a great candidate for something. It may just be that they don't have the time or they don't feel that they have enough knowledge about you to do so. So ask them in such a way where it's not painting them into a corner to say yes, if they really want to say no, because if they really want to say no, you want them to. So you can go on to somebody who has the time, availability, knowledge to really write a strong recommendation for you. If and when they say yes, provide them with everything you possibly can to make sure they have all of the information they need to write that strong recommendation. So this includes information about what you're applying for, when it's due, right? Make sure they know the deadline. Um, make sure they know how they're going to need to submit the recommendation. So for UDAL, because you have to apply through ONSA, they need to submit it to ONSA. For Doris Duke, they're going to receive an email from their application portal, which is called Submittable. They're going to receive an email from that portal to do the recommendation. Sometimes it might be a form. Sometimes it might be a letter. That kind of information is something you want to be able to provide them. And then also provide them your application materials. Even if they're in draft form, make sure they know that. But if you are needing to submit a resume, transcripts, essay responses, provide that to your recommenders so that they have a more full picture of who you are, why you're applying, why you're a strong candidate, so that they can incorporate some of that into their recommendation as well. And then keep in mind, this is your application. It is your responsibility. So you need to follow up with them along the way to make sure that it gets done that it gets done by the deadline. 
And also, once you get an answer back, whether it's yes or no, make sure if they've taken the time to write you a thoughtful recommendation for something, make sure you let them know how it went, um, whether, whether it's yes or no. I know once it's a no, it can be a little disheartening to then follow up with somebody and tell them, oh, no, I didn't get it. Um, but don't leave them hanging, especially because you might go to them again in the future. So you want to make sure you round it out as well. So that's generally the recommendation advice. So again, my name is Shay Masterson. My email is on the screen. My phone number is on the screen. My physical location is on the screen. That's Honors Hall on the Tempe campus within the Barrett Honors Complex. Um, while that's where I'm located, you do not have to be an honors student to come and meet me, uh, whether physically or on Zoom. Um, that's just where I'm located. Our website is onsa.asu.edu. I recommend that you go to this website and that you, um, if you wanna schedule an appointment with me, there's make an appointment uh, button on our website. There's also a newsletter that we send out each week with pertinent information about upcoming deadlines, upcoming information sessions like this one, other things going on, new programs that we're advising on. Um, so you should also sign up for that just kind of to stay up to date. We only send it out once a week, so it's not gonna you know, flood your inbox or anything like that. Um, but you can do that right from our website. We also have a scholarship database on our website, which is not a completely exhaustive list, but today I've only shared with you a handful of programs. We advise on about 80 different national scholarships and fellowships. Um, and even that is not all of the national scholarships and fellowships that are available for various uh, purposes. So definitely peruse that. If anything we talked about today sounded of interest, there might be other things that sound of interest. Each student is different. Um, each program is different. So there might be other things out there as well. Uh, but if you do want to schedule with me, you can do that right through our website with the make an appointment. It's going to take you to the Barrett advising system. Again, that's where we're located, but you do not have to be a Barrett honor student to meet with us. So don't let that don't see that and get worried like you're in the wrong place or or anything like that, still schedule with me through there. Um, once you go into that, ONSA is one of the options, ONSA, Office of National Scholarship Advisement. So that is all I have for today. I know we haven't had any questions along the way, but are there any questions now? Again, you can type into the chat or unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, I uh, actually I had a quick question. So yeah. um, I had tried applying specifically to the congressional internship program. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was about two years ago now is when I was in my junior year at community college. And I mean, everything I sent in, they thought it was pretty good. And I got to like the second stage of the application process. So I was, I was essentially just wondering, would it be like, um, kind of like, like frowned upon if I were to like reuse the same materials that I created? Um, for the first time I went through, or would, would it just be safe to just kind of like start from scratch all over again? So I would say um, no and no. <laughs> so <laughs> it has been what, a couple years since then? Yeah, I would say maybe about one, one and a half. So I would say in theory, there might be some other things that you can um, address and talk about. So using the exact same thing is probably not going to be best because then you might be missing out on some, some valuable, if not anything else, insight you've gained since then. Mm -hmm. um, but also you've applied once, so you don't necessarily need to be starting from scratch either. So you could use that as your kind of starting point if that works for you. Um, and also keep in mind, now you have um, me, as a resource too. So you can also, um, even though, like I said, today I talked about, you know, there are other programs. If you want feedback, suggestions um, on your materials, I would be happy to look over those as well. Okay. Um, and so. then would that also be like ring true for the actual application, application portion of it? Um, the reason why I say that is because with the congressional internship, and it also sounds like the scholarship, um, opportunity you guys require um, 
an essay as well as um, an application that I'm assuming has essay questions because um, the congressional internship was definitely like that where I had to write an essay and then the application itself was comprised of like 30 mini like sub essay questions. Yep. Um, so, so absolutely. Yes. Okay. We can, we can provide, so in the case of the undergraduate scholarship, it's, it's 11 short, short answer questions, I think is what they call it. Um, okay. So yes, we can provide feedback on that as well. Sometimes students want feedback, want feedback on one versus the other. Sometimes it's both. It's whatever, it's whatever you're wanting and find valuable, but we're here to do that. Okay. So Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're so welcome. And that's also again why those the the template or the sample or even just a, a se completely separate word document comes in handy because then you can kind of work through it and you can you can help us by sharing that with us instead of just one statement you can share the whole kind of template with us. Other questions. If there are no other questions, we are done for today. So you are, you are free to go now. Thank you for your time. Um, reach out to me, please. If, if you're not sure about anything I've said today about whether you should apply or can apply or what you should do to apply, that is what I'm here for. So reach out, either email me or schedule an appointment with me or both. Awesome, thank you very much, appreciate it. You are so welcome. Um, I will go ahead and stop recording now.